to introduce our first speaker, um, Issei. She is the National Chair of Co and Coordinating Committee member of Tamil Solidarity. She is very well known by many Tamil activists in the UK. She has been in numerous campaigns defending all the rights of the Tamil living in the UK, as well as being involved in various trade unions and campaigns. Ten years on in Sri Lanka, the repression by the Sri Lankan state is still carrying on. And Tamil Solidarity has continuously put forward the position of building a real alternative and struggle in Sri Lanka. We highlighted the need to link with our natural allies, both in Sri Lanka and across the world, to build a united common struggle to win the rights of the Tamil-speaking people and against all oppression in Sri Lanka. The period that we're living in, it'd be very difficult not to mention the um, pandemic, which is affecting all of our lives so severely at the moment. And this pandemic has exposed inequality, the division that exists within the capitalist system. Tamil Solidarity has been highlighting a number of times, uh, not just recently, but before. And this is a common feature amongst the Bain community. It is poverty as well as um, overcrowdedness and um, uh, lack of a secure uh, job that is putting these uh, communities at risk to be able to genuinely have discussion with the fighting left socialists in Sri Lanka to build a united common struggle for the rights of our uh, Tamil-speaking people. The fight for the Tamil-speaking rights. It's important that we link that struggle and not just um, against the Sri Lankan state, but against all these capitalist right-wing states and calling out for the British government to stop, um, or Golden Brown, Golden Brown save the Tamils, or for the British government to stop the war in Sri Lanka. We shouldn't forget that that right-wing Blairite government was supplying arms to Sri Lanka. And so therefore it's very important to us realise who our natural allies are, who stands with us, and to link our struggle with them. Midelin, uh, he is a member of Tamil Freedom Coalition and the Coordinating Committee member. We've had many close discussions with Midland and Tamil Freedom Coalition. He's done many work with the Canadian Tamil workers and uh, similar work to Tamil Solidarity. Uh, we are a group of leftist organizers who are uh, committed to the struggle of the liberation of our people, the Ulan Tamil people, uh, not only in the Tamil homeland, but uh, throughout the diaspora as well. Um, Canada and especially Toronto's uh, history of Tamil migration is a history intricately tied to that of our people back home. These Tamils found themselves living throughout the city's low income and working class neighbors, doing multiple jobs for low wages, avoiding deportation and immigrant officials. Uh, they were constantly being exploited and threatened by by both their employers and the state. Uh, now, over 30 years since the first wave of refugees hit Canada, uh, we are seen as an economic and political powerhouse. Today, we have a, a rising professional class. We have business people. We have politicians of all stripes. What some consider to be a community that has made it uh, in a global multicultural city like Toronto, uh, we have made it. But in reality, we know and can concretely see that a huge class divide has formed within our community here. Uh, to the protests that took capitals and cities worldwide, it has uh, it was that class that shaped our struggle. In recent years, those who are on the side of our class versus those who are detriments to our class and community have become much clearer. If history is our teacher, as is active resistance, we know that the only way forward is by building a stronger, unified leftist global movement consisting of our people from the diaspora and the island. Um, now I introduce Samandi, um, who is the UCL town president. Of recalling the shameful violation carried out against our people, what the Sri Lankan government sees as a victory is actually just an embarrassing facade they've kept afloat despite the apparent truths and repeatedly brought to light. 11 years on and almost every young person knows what Mardi Adnan and May 18th stand for and take the days to remember and reflect on what was lost. This simple fact highlights why Remembrance Days are undeniably important to the diaspora. These days show us a glimpse of hope in our ability to come together as a collective. Mundi Vaika will not be forgotten. Um, it marks a moment of loss in our struggle but more powerfully acts as a sharp driving force um, simply through its weight in both emotion and significance. But without further ado let me introduce Hannah South, the General Secretary of the Socialist Party. 11th anniversary of a brutal genocidal massacre and part of what we're doing is remembering the lives that were lost. That it is also the anniversary of a very powerful mass movement. I remember going on the demonstrations back in 2009 and the streets of London being full of Tamil people that were socialists and trade unionists like myself there as well from other parts of the world, but overwhelmingly ordinary working class Tamil people out on the street and showing your power in a massive anti-war movement. Your slogan for today's meeting, remember the dead and fight for the living, describes perfectly the ongoing 
and fight for justice for the Tamil people, but I actually also think it is a very good slogan for what the entire world is facing now in the COVID crisis and the economic aftermath of the COVID crisis. And the two are interconnected. Like in many countries, it's very clear that the brutal chauvinist regime in Sri Lanka, under the cover of the COVID crisis, is stepping up its militar militarization, its dictatorial approach, um, is whipping up chauvinism. I read just the other day in an article, and I'm sure there are countless examples like this, but the regime, for example, under the cover of COVID, freeing and pardoning a sergeant who had been sentenced to death for killing innocent Tamils, including children, one of the ones who had been uh, legally dealt with and then was just freed under the cover of the COVID uh, crisis. And of course, at the same time, as in all countries, but especially in the neo-colonial world, then it is the, the lockdown has meant the worst suffering for the poorest people where you know the socialist party is part of an international the committee for workers international that has and we have sister organizations around the world including in sri lanka and it's reported every day by our co-thinkers that day laborers are starving because the lockdowns mean that nobody has got any income at all globally it's it's something like 1.6 billion workers around the world who have faced with no income as a result of the lockdowns that are taking place. And there are already uprisings. In the Lebanon, there are uprisings taking place against the poverty that the lockdowns have brought. Of course, the lockdown is one side. It's also the case that it is the working class and poor that are suffering worse from the virus. And we know that here in Britain as well. I live in Newham. Newham is a London borough that has the highest number of deaths from COVID of anywhere in Britain. What lessons would I suggest that Tamil Solidarity supporters learn from the current situation? Big biz the Tories only stand up for big business, but who has got the power to change things? We would say it's the working class every section of the working class and look what's happened during this crisis we were told the working class doesn't really exist anymore it, it, you're old-fashioned what are you talking about who's kept society running who are the essential workers they are the cleaners the bus drivers the hospital workers the teachers they're the people who kept society running but they're also the people who are fighting to make sure that the population is kept safe. And it's the trade unions in particular, ordinary workers who have acted. This crisis has shown that capitalism is a crisis-ridden system. And whenever they hit an obstacle like they are now, they're forced to intervene, state intervention, but they do it in their interests. We want nationalization under democratic workers' control, not for the profits of a few. So, for example, instead of nationalising the railways in order to prop up the private rail companies, they should have nationalised the pharmaceutical industry, the private healthcare providers under democratic workers' control. Then you could begin to build a society which did have a 35-hour week for all, no unemployment, no loss of pay on your 35-hour week, decent housing for all, the right to a free education and so on. That's what socialism means. That's what we've got to fight for. And this crisis shows that capitalism isn't working, we need a socialist solution.